Hi everyone, welcome you all. In the today's video, we are going to learn about H2 database. So basically H2 database is a mock database for unit and integration testing. And especially when you're testing the APIs or microservices, we can use H2 database as a mock database instead of using the real database. Now let us see where exactly H2 database is used and how it is going to work. If I just look at this picture, in our previous videos, we have seen how to write the unit test cases for service layer. And also we have seen how to write the unit test cases for controller layer by mocking service and repositories. And at the time of uh, writing the unit test cases for the service methods, we have mocked the data within service itself. Instead of request going to the database, we have just created our mock data inside the service and we use that uh, data as a mock data. And the same thing we have done for controller methods also while automate uh, while writing the unit test cases for controller methods we have mocked the service layer right now this time what we are going to do is we are going to mock the database okay we are going to mock the database not the service or controller so what is the mocking of database means so normally when you send a request the controller method will again talk to the service method and service will get the data actual uh, from the actual database or real database. And here internally we have a, a bean class and repository and uh, this particular layer will fetch the data from the actual database and the same data will be provided. And again, service will provide the same data to the controller. We will get as a response. Now here, instead of uh, using the real database and we can also create our own mock database and in which we can maintain the data and that mock data we are going to use for unit or integration testing because we need to also test whether the service is actually interacting with the database or not so instead of disturbing the production database or real database we can create our own database and we can populate our own data and that database we can use as a mock database for the unit or integration testing of service or controller Okay, so that is a concept. So now what is H2 database that we need to understand first. So H2 database is basically, it is an embedded open source and in memory database. H2 is a embedded open source and in memory database. What does that mean? It is completely open source in in memory database. In memory database means which will not occupy any location, just like a, uh, it's not like a real database. And if, if you want to work with a real database, we have to first install it and it will occupy a certain amount of memory in the disk. And we need to create all the tables, data and everything that needs some memory, right? But here in memory database means it will not create anything on the disk, which will just create a temporary memory where tables will be created and data will be created. As soon as we close the H2 database, all the data tables, everything will be vanished. So that's how H2 database works. So H2 is an embedded open source and in-memory database. And basically it is a relational database management system written in Java. So in Java, by using Java programming language, this database is written. And it is basically support only RDBMS uh, database stuff, like relational database management. It just works like Oracle or SQL Server or MySQL. They are relational databases. And it is generally used for unit testing along with the integration testing. And it stores the data in memory, not persist the data on the disk. Actual data will not be stored in the disk, but it will just create a temporary memory and all the data will be stored in the temporary memory. Now, what are the advantages of H2 database? So zero configuration, we no need to any configuration means we no need to download anything and we no need to install anything. Okay, zero configuration. And it is very easy to use instead of working with the real database, and we can easily work with the H2 database. It's very simple and easy to use. And it is also lightweight and very faster. It supports standard SQL as well as JDBC API. It means we can just execute all SQL commands uh, against the H2 database. And also which will support JDBC API it means we can connect through H2 database through JDBC connection. And finally, it will also provide something called web console to maintain the database. So normally if you work with uh, any real time database, MySQL or Oracle or whatever, you will have a client application or client tool through which you will be able to connect to the database and you will be able to execute all the queries. You can see all the tables and everything. But here, H2 database will provide a kind of console in which we can 
see what are the tables are available and we can also execute all the sql commands inside that console web console so these are the advantages which we have uh, in h2 database so this is a basically a simple lightweight uh, database which is developed using java itself okay now we are going to use this particular h2 database to perform a unit and integration testing of our apis as well as web services okay now let us start so if i just go back to our uh, picture so previously we have created unit test cases for service layer but we have just mocked the data instead of talking to the real database now in this video i'll just show you how to create h2 database first okay how to uh, set up the h3 database in our project and later on we will see how to write the unit test cases and integration test cases by using the h3 database instead of using the real database okay now let's go to eclipse now if i just go to our project which we have developed and tested previously and uh, in the src main java we have all development code so which contains a, a spring boot application main code actually spring boot application we can start from this code Right. So if I run this class, all the whole Spring Boot application will start running. And also we have a one bean class country and we have a controller class and we have a repository class and we also have a service class. So this is the structure of the Spring Boot project. Now, if I just look at this, when you run this particular uh, Spring Boot application class, basically, which will talk to the real database. So where exactly we have configured the real database, if I just come to the resources and we have something called application.properties file. So inside this application.properties, we have specified the connections related, the entries which are related to the MySQL connection, like data source URL, username, password, driver, and so on, right? So these are the details which we have specified under MySQL. So the connection details we specified. Now, Spring Boot application will use these connection details to connect to the actual database or real database, which is MySQL. And once you run the Spring Boot project, we can just run all the queries and uh, all the requests through Postman or any other client and actual data will be operated from the real database. Right. So if I just look at this, uh, just I'm just running my Spring Boot application for now and run as Spring Boot application. So once you start run this Spring Boot application, so we can send HTTP request and we can get the data from the actual database. Now, if I just look at my actual database in my country table, I have only one record, one record only I have. So if you want to work with this, we just go to the Postman tool and send this request, get all countries. And uh, obviously I will get only one country because in the database, I have only one country. Similarly, we can also send other requests and we can directly operate the real database, which is a MySQL database. Now, my requirement is instead of using real database, I want to create my own database locally to perform unit and integration testing. That's a basically mock database I want to create. So now we need to follow uh, certain steps here. So for that, what you have to do is to set up the H2 database inside your project. Simply what we can do is we can just go to pound.xml and we need to add h2 database dependency which is additional dependency which we need to add now how we will get that dependency if i just go to the maven repository go to the maven repository mvn repository and search for h2 database and you will get h2 database so this is a h2 database engine and you can also search here let's say h2 database search and then it will show you h2 database engine so from this, we can get the dependency. And here the current version is 1.4.200 is there. So there is some issue in this. Let me just go to the little older one, 1.4.199. And this is a dependency which we need to add and go to the Eclipse. And under dependencies, this is a one additional dependency which we need to add to work with the H2 database. That's it. So this will automatically set up your H2 database inside your project. And we no need to do any other configuration. We no need to download anything here. Just one dependency which we need to add into your project and then update the POM and it will download required dependencies and it will, uh, by default, it will operate H2 database within your project. This is one step we have to do. So first we need to add the dependency. And so once you add this dependency, the next step is we go to the application.properties. Earlier, we have specified the connection details for the MySQL, which is actual real database. 
Now, instead, we have to specify the connection details for the H2 database. But how we will get the H2 database connection details? You can just Google it. So there are so many websites are there, so many blogs are there, you can get that information. So you can say H2 database connection properties. If I search for H2 database connection properties, you will see so many uh, blogs and so many applications and they will give some sample properties, but just go back here. So these are the configuration. These are the entries, application entries, which we have to specify. So we can just copy paste and whatever you can find in the Google. And uh, let me show you, oh, I have copied something here for H2 database and I'm placing here. But at a time you can use either MySQL or H2 database. Currently MySQL is directly going to the real database. So I just want to comment these statements for now. So you can say control slash, which will automatically comment all the statements. So now I have created the connection details for the H2 database. So if I just look at here, these are the default values. Okay, we should not change anything. So because as soon as you added POM, the H2 database is already configured. Okay, we don't need to do anything here. Just we need to provide the connection details. So if I just look at here again, so here the first line is representing the URL, just like a data source URL. This is the data source URL of H2 database. And this is a driver, a class name and username is SA. There is no password. And this is a database platform a link we have to specify and console. As I said, uh, one point here, uh, H2 database is also provide some console from where we can operate all the queries, right? So for that, we can just specify these properties, spring h2.console.enable equal to true. So when you specify this, uh, the web console also will be enabled where we can execute all the queries again as a H2 database. We can connect to the H2 database through console, through web console, we can execute all the queries. And this optional, so this statement is optional. And then spring.jpi.hibernate.ddl-auto is update. So normally whatever queries I'm going to send, all queries will be updated. So this is another entry which we need to add. So these are the connection details which we need to pass, which are related to H2 database. And where we have to pass these details inside the application.properties file. Earlier we have a MySQL connection details. We have just commented now, instead of rooting the actual database. Now I'm just going to root the H2 database. Now specify and save this. This is the second point. First thing we have upda updated the pom.xml dependency. Second step, we have added H2 database connection details. Now the third step is in the H2 database, we have to populate our mock data, right? So how we can populate the data, how we can create a table, how we can populate the data. So for that, we have to create something called data.sql file. So where we have to create inside the resources itself, we have to create something called a new file. And I will name it as, this is just a normal file, okay? So let me just create general and file. And the file name is, I'll name it as a data.sql. So once you created this data.sql, we have to just write the queries which we are going to use. So let me just open with text editor. So because in H2 database, by default, we don't have any tables or don't have any data in the table. So we have to create our own data and we have to create our own data on tables. So here I'm just copying three different queries. The first query will create a country table and uh, id is a primary key capital and country name three details we have in this table and i have just inserting the two new records one is a uh, uh, first record is delhi india second record is a washington usa these are the two records i am trying to insert the table so when these queries will be executed from this data.sql then what happens is whenever you start running your spring boot application Whenever you start running your Spring Boot application, that means this is a particular class, this is a main class, then your Spring Boot server will start. So as soon as your Spring Boot server will start, it will go and refer the data from the data.sql directly. And then these queries will be executed. And before executing this query, first it will connect to the H2 database by using this connection details from the application.properties file. Once it is connected, then data.sql queries will be automatically executed, right? So once you stop the server, then all the stuff will be vanished from the database. And these commands will temporarily execute on the database at the runtime only, 
Okay, remember this. So only at the runtime, H2 database will be created. Inside the database, this table will be created, and in data will be inserted and get ready with our testing purpose. This is a mock data. And as soon as you stop the server, again it will stop the H2 database, and all the data, whatever we created through data transfer, will be vanished. Okay, remember that. So now we have updated form.xml with the H2 database entry. Second step, we have added H2 database connection details, and the third step, we have created data.sql file, and in which we have specified the queries, in which we have specified the queries to be executed. Because when you send your request, get all countries, post, put all these things, we need some data along with the table that we are going to specify in the data.sql. Okay. So now, once you start your Spring Boot server, it will automatically connect to the H2 database through application dot properties which we specified. Then execute all the data dot SQL, uh, data dot SQL file which contains all the queries, and then it will automatically take our request through any client tool. Okay. Now let us uh, we we have done the configuration. So now let us start the Spring Boot server and we'll see how it is going to work. So Bombard XML we have updated. Application properties are updated. And uh, then application. This is a Spring Boot application. The data is also ready. Now let me just run my Spring Boot application. Run as a Spring Boot app. So once you run the Spring Boot application, so then automatically H2 database will be created. And here we have seen some issue. Now let us look into that issue. Just look at this error. So it is clearly saying cannot load driver class. It is not able to load the driver. So here the reason is, if I just go back to the form dot XML, we have added this dependency means we have we are creating the H2 database only at the testing testing phase. Okay, so this is the one of the goal of MVN. So instead of testing, we need that H2 database throughout the cycle throughout the development cycle. So we have to just comment this statement, the scope. Let me or else you can just remove it, no problem. And once you updated this form dot XML, then again go to the Spring Boot application and just run as a Spring Boot app. So once you run it, so it should start the Spring Boot application server. Now it should able to connect to the mock database, which is H two database, instead of connecting to the MySQL database, because we have configured a H two L data H two database configuration in the application dot properties, right? Now let us test this. Now our Spring Boot server is up and running. Now go to the Postman. Let us try to send the request. So I'm just sending the GET request. I'm getting all the countries. So if I just go back again in the data dot SQL, right? We have executed uh, two queries. There are only two records we have in this table country. So those two records we have to capture here. So when I send this request, now you can just see there are two records we have captured, and it is. Given as a response, so from where we are getting these two records from the H2 mock database, but in the real database we have only one record. If I just go back to the MySQL, which is a real database, inside this we have only one record, one Delhi, India. But now how many records we are getting? Only two records we are getting because in the mock database we have inserted two records. In the H2 database we have inserted two records, so that is the reason. So let me just change these records. Let me just make it as some X, and here I'll make it as a Y. Okay, first record I have modified. So now the save it and go back, and execute the same request one more time. Click on the send. Now because Spring Boot server we have not restarted, so still we are getting the same record. So what I will do is I'll just stop the Spring Boot server once again. So to pick the latest records, and then again go back to the Spring Boot application, and then. Execute run as Spring Boot application. So once again Spring Boot application started, the latest data will be taken into H2 database. Now again go back to the Postman tool and send the same request. So now we will see the first record is updated as a X and Y. So the same data we got it. And similarly, we can also test all other records against the H2 database. Now the connection is not going to the real database. Now go to the get request. I want to get the countries. The first record I want to get. I'm passing the country ID is one. So you can just look at here. This is the country ID record we captured, which is giving as a response. And this is also coming from the H2 database. Similarly, I'll pass the country name. So do we have a country name India as of now? No. USA is there. 
So let me just get the country by using name. I say I'm passing USA, send, and now you got the USA country. Similarly, we can do the post also. Suppose uh, add country, I'm just posting one more record here. Click on send. So which is created another record. ID is three, country is equal to uh, Italy, country capital is a Rome. So third record is also created. Now, if I go to the update record, I'm just want to update the third record. So pass the ID and pass the new information. And if I just execute this previously, the data is different. Now it is updated. Now the third record I want to delete, pass the three here and send, and this is deleted the existing record. So now this data is basically operating from mock database, which is H2 database. And it is not exactly really connecting to the MySQL database because the MySQL is having only one single record here. Even though if I delete all the record from here, no issues because basically it is not interacting with the real database. Still, we are able to interact with the database because we have successfully mocked the H2 database. Again, if you just get countries, you will get exact data as usual. Okay, so this is a, the main usage of H2 database. It is a basically a mock database. So again, if I just look at the picture, so instead of uh, using this real database, instead of routing the request to the database, we can create our mock database, which is H2 database, and all the requests from the service or controller, we can reroute to the mock database instead of using real database. So instead of dis disturbing the real data, because real database is having so many tables, so many relations, and some other people also may work on the same database tables. So instead of disturbing the existing real database, we can create our own database at the runtime in our Spring Boot application, and we can mock the data in the database, and then we can test the service layer and whether it is able to interacting with the database or not. Unit testing along with the integration testing, we can write the test cases. Okay, so we have just seen how to configure H2 database in our project and instead how we can route the request to the H2 database instead of real database. So that we have seen. So only three steps we have followed. One is we have updated pom.xml with H2 database dependency. Second step, we have just updated application properties instead of specifying uh, actual connection details, we specify the H2 database connection details. Third step, we have just created the data.sql, so which contains the queries which we are going to execute against the H2 database. So these are the three steps we have to follow. And one more last thing, as I said before, H2 database is also provided one web console where you can execute all the commands. So, but how we can access that console? So to access the console in the application properties, we have added one more, one new entry here. You can just look at this. Spring.h2.console.enable equal to true. So when, if you add this entry, then only you can see the console, but how we can access the console. So to access the console, we have to uh, use uh, a URL here and uh, basically it will run on 8080. If I just look at here, this is a, a console URL of the, but when this will open, when you start Spring Boot server, then only it will open. So currently this site is not reached. Why? Because our Spring Boot server has got stopped. Let me Spring Boot server once again. So run as Spring Boot app. So once you start, uh, run your Spring Boot server, then H2 database will start. And uh, then we can see that through console, web console. So now it is started. So how we can access the console of H2? So we have to use this URL. So it is basically runs on 8080 port number. So here I'll say localhost colon 8080 H2 console. This will give you the console win, uh, web console like this and through which we will able to connect to the H2 database. So here there's a database name which we have configured in our properties will be shown mydb and username is SA, password is empty. So when you click on this test connection, so connection is successful. So when you click on the connect, so here we will see all the UI. So here you can execute all the queries and here you can create a new table and all the stuff we can do all SQL uh, commands we can execute through this web console. And this is available only at the runtime. So when you start Spring Boot server, then H2 database will be created. Then you will be able to access this. So as soon as you stop your server, so then automatically uh, your H2 database will stop and then we, you will not able to access. Now I have just stopped my Spring Boot server. Now we can just refresh. Then we will not able to connect to now. So even first of all, it will not give you the web console. It's not reached. Okay, because only at the runtime, which is going to create 
and it's, it is going to create all the SQL statement. It is going to execute all the statements and uh, make it ready for us for testing. So as soon as your testing is completed, we'll stop the server, then H2 database, all the data will be vanished. So this is how we need to work with the H2 database. So which is actually the mock database will be used for unit testing and integration testing. And uh, at the time we can create our mock database. Okay, so in the next videos, I'll show you how we can write unit or integration testing using H2 mock database. Okay, so that's all for this video guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.